hello and welcome to a North Wales side by side video. I'm making this video tonight because I'm being asked on multiple occasions in comments what has this cost to build? I'll break it down into two sections and we'll keep it simple. If you've already got a mountain bike or any bike, an e-bike, um, sorry, a hybrid bike or a road bike, and you want to go electric conversion. You've already got the bike, so you're saving yourself the cost of buying a bike. I didn't have a bike to put this conversion on, and I've been looking for a bike for a long time. I've looked at loads and this one I found in a cash converters. This is somebody's bike that they bought during COVID and somebody paid £1,600 for this bike in the spec I bought it in on its original tyres. So that tells you it, it hadn't been used an awful lot. But that also showed up in the condition of the bike. There wasn't a scratch, a mark, a scuff. There was nothing on it. It was absolutely mint. So I paid £330 for this bike as a mountain bike. So that's the first part of my costs. The bike purchase. Next... Part two, the cost of all the components. I haven't got all the components on the floor here. The battery and the charger are somewhere safe in a metal box because it's a lithium battery and I don't trust them. So my battery is stored in a metal fireproof box. So... What did I buy? What parts did I have to buy? Obviously, I had to buy a new rim. So, one thing you will need to know when you're building your bike is the rim diameter. It's either 26, 27 and a half, 29, and there is a 700 and something size wheel as well. I think there's four different size wheels used on the back of these bigger bikes I'm on a 26 your next decision is how much power do you want in your rear hub that's your choice then that depends on what you then pay for said rim and said powerful hub motor Along with the wheel and the hub, you'll need a few other components. Battery, a charger. The carrier for the battery. That normally comes with the battery if you're buying a, a pre-made battery. You'll need the control box, stroke inverter. That suits the voltage you're going to use. And... The hub motor you're going to use. Then there's a few other components that you've got to decide whether you're going to use or not. And I bought everything I thought I needed before I bought the bike. I'd already ordered all the parts. So not knowing what I was buying, I bought a set of levers with... The brake sensors in and what happens when you're riding along if you pull the brakes them sensors cut the power to the hub motor luckily the bike I bought had hydraulic brakes on it so them I didn't actually need so I've still got them but I also bought all the sensors and the wiring for hydraulic brakes and then decided I wasn't going to use them either. 
So I've got no brake cut off on this bike. I then had a choice of do I go for a thumb throttle or do I go for a twist grip? And I decided to go for a twist grip on my bike, so I bought a twist grip. I also bought the pedal assist with its wiring and its sensors and then decided I wasn't going to use them either. So I've got a pile of components there that I didn't use but I bought. So for all them components, including the ones I didn't use, set me back seven hundred and ten pound and forty two pennies i've tallied all the all the parts up tonight and that's including delivery to the house from all the, the suppliers i used so the grand total for my particular bike built in the specification i've built it in is eleven hundred pound and forty two pence that's what this bike owes me to date. That is not a lot of money to build the monster I've built. But the bike was built for a purpose. The bike was built to go out off-roading because the bike was designed to go as a trail bike. Which is why I wanted such a powerful hub motor, a powerful battery, a good quality controller stroke inverter. Oh, the other thing I haven't told you what I bought was, you've probably seen it in the other videos, I bought the little computer screen that goes on the handlebars where you control all the settings and set the bike up. So that, that's another component I had to buy. But that's that's included in the seven hundred and ten pound and forty two pence. So yeah, you can build one of these relatively cheaply. If you've got a bike already, it's cheaper than the way I did it. But I still think for what I pay, what I paid for the bike, all the components, I've built what I wanted to build, which is an absolute monster off road, and it's really really a rideable bike and it's gonna do what i want it to do it's already proved itself off-road i know what it's capable of now and i've taken it to some quite extreme climbs um some extreme drop-offs some very nice flowing trails a forest trail then had a puncher and yeah that stopped the entire ride the other day but that's something that happens but what i am going to do to save getting any more punches because i think it's going to be an ongoing problem because this hub motor is so heavy even though i had the tire at 50 psi i think when i dropped off a jump i pinched the tube because these tires are so flexible i pinched the tube and it split the tube i'm gonna put what they call a moose in that tire and i think i'm going to do the same with anybody's bike i build for them because i think it's going to be an ongoing problem tubes it's either going to tear the valve out because of the torque or it's when you're dropping off off road it's going to pinch tubes and destroy them. Spoils your ride. Moose won't do that. And then you'll never have a problem with the puncher. So I've ordered the mooses. I've also got a tube to go back in it to get the bike back on the road for now. Because I still want to use it whilst I'm waiting for the mooses. And then I'm going to have a puncher free bike as well. I'm going to put a moose front and rear. They're both getting mooses because I don't want to be coping with punches at the side of the trail. It's just me. 
because it is an off-road bike at the end of the day that's what it's designed for that's what it's been built for so the comfort on the road doesn't bother me even though you do have to use it sensibly on the road between trails and if you're out for a ride with your friends what you end up doing is because i've got five power settings riding it in power setting two where it then becomes through the magic of the computer and the controller that becomes a 250 watt motor and it'll only do the legal speed of 15 miles an hour but it's still illegal at that because i'm using 58 volt battery 36 is legal 250 is legal there so whichever way i play this bike it shouldn't be on the road there's no ifs no ands no buts about that technically it's an illegal bike on the highway it's basically an e motorbike but if you are going to take one of these on the road it's on your back you take the chances and what you have to use is a bit of common sense and ride slowly on the road. It's all it comes down to, common sense. And try not to make yourself stand out. Right, one more point before I finish the video. Before you even commit to building one of these. Take your original wheel out of the bike that you are going to convert. And you need to know this one critical dimension, and it's a cross. Where the wheel drops in, what they call a drop out here, if you go to the inside of the frame and measure a cross, you need to know that dimension. You need a minimum, and an absolute bare minimum of 136 millimetres. Otherwise, you're not going to get one of these high power hub motors in there. That's very, very critical. And the other thing you have to be careful about when you put your gear set on, you have to make sure that your gear set when you drop the wheel in that bit that that ring there doesn't rub on the frame there it cannot rub on there so you will need one spacer that you can see up against the gear set there and that spacer just stands proud of the gear set. It's that washer, that one there, sits inside the gear set. Get that right. You need just enough clearance to clear the edge of the derailleur, which mine has got just. It's very, very tight, but that's all you need. Just make sure your derailleur doesn't touch the frame. And then you need to play with the, with the spacers on that side of the wheel. Just so everything fits tight in the frame. That's the only massively critical thing when you're putting one of these big hub motors on. It fits, it's spaced correctly, and it runs down the centre of the frame. You will have to play with them spaces. You will have to move things around. And it just takes a little bit of jiggery-pokery, but it's doable. I've done it. If I can do it, anybody can do it. But if anybody doesn't feel confident, and they want their bike converting, give me a shout. Let me know what you've got, wheel sizes, space in there, and let me work out what you need to order. And you're quite welcome. 
give me your bike, give me your, give me all the bits. I'll put it together for you. I've got no problems doing that. Anyhow, thank you very, very much for watching the breakdown on the costs on this bike. And just a little bit of advice if you're thinking about doing it, because that is massively critical. Thanks for watching. Please consider liking. Please consider subscribing to the channel.